that and a very, very short four strides down to six to 12 vertical. A normal seven strides to the water fence at fence seven. It's four meters wide, which is very wide. And then a balancing, excuse me, six strides down to eight to 12 vertical. Another turn back where the riders need to save time again to fence nine, the triple combination, two oxers really stretches the horse out and then a short one stride to a vertical. Long distance down here to fence 10, which is a very narrow fence, it's a style, and a flowing five strides to 11, which is a, an oxer with stripy poles and a water tray underneath, so a lot for the horse to look at. Another turn back here to the tallest fence on the course, and a bending line where there's an option of an outside distance or an inside distance to a double. And finally, a nice even six strides to 14, a very tall and wide oxer to finish. Jerry, it is a quite a technical track and there's some big lines in there from fence five to triple bar yeah. to the vertical wall. That is yeah. an awkward line, or it looks yeah. it to me. Yeah, if I was sitting at home watching it, I'd say, uh, they just have to go from one to the other to the other. But there's a lot going on. The, the, from fence uh, five there, that's a treble bar, so the guy's got to use leg, and the treble bar will always make your horse a little bit hollow. And then the next one, he gives you a vertical on four short strides, so now he's got to come back off that after you kicking him at the treble bar, so he's got to wait. He's got to get up in the air, and he's got to be careful on that. Next thing, we've got to bow out on the seven, so that's steering thing to get out on the seven, because that seven is a little quiet to the water, we need to get forward. But once we get forward at the water, what does Alan say? No, no, whoa, you got to come back again. And you're, you're w really waiting on the next distance there. And so you need real rideability uh, from the horse and you need a bit of scope to jump the, the treble bar and to jump the water. That's one tricky line, but Brendan McArdle went down to the ring to have a chat with Shane Breen, who is the seven rider to go this afternoon. He might describe a few more for us. Thanks, Ruby. Well, uh, big fences down here this afternoon. One meter sixty maximum height, and no better man to take us around the course is the defending champion Shane Breen. He won it back in 2019. This is a big course, and the first big fence and tricky fence is fence four. Those dreaded planks—they're coming up quite early. That, that's right, Brendan. I think Alan Wade and his team—they've done a magnificent job here today. Big jumps. You need scope. You need carefulness. You need it all. As you say, the plank there, the horses, it's a very light plank on top. They need to get their focus there. Then you come round to the triple bar and then down to this tall vertical over the telephone boxes. That's a little bit short, that distance. Yeah, the triple bar, you need scope. And then it's four strides to the vertical. Again, very tall. And the horses really need to have good rideability that they're patient and wait with their rider. And then we have either uh, six strides up to this water jump here, which is a big stretch and then a very light vertical after it on six strides again. I just want to point out on the back there, they're putting on the plasticine at the moment. If a horse marks that at all, that's four falls. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be their foot, it can be their heel. So, so then we move a little bit forward in the course and we'll bring it in the combination. Now the combination has a, an oxer to an oxer to a vertical. They're running back towards the pocket and sort of uphill. That's going to be a little bit difficult because the catch a rail here is certainly coming out. Yeah, the, uh, the oxers aren't super big, but obviously they take a lot of jumping. But this vertical coming out is very short. So you have two strides and then you have one stride. So you need scope and then you don't want to override them because you have to give the horse one stride, but you have to give him time to back up and jump this vertical. Now, I think this fence coming up next could cause a bit of a problem because it's a, a, a skinnier fence. It's like a pencil fence and it's very airy. So horses could get distracted with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's airy, it's uh, black poles, and then if we look behind it as well, we have an oxer with water under it with um, uh, red and black poles. So again, it's, it's you know, the course designer, he's, he's trying to catch the horse's eye out. So the rider has to have good balance. I it's an eight stride here to it. So it's up to the rider to sit tall, patient again, get a nice jump, and then don't over rush um, to the big oxer after it. Then you're going to swing back around the pocket area. This is the fence and this is the line that you think is going to be crucial in determining who wins the Grand Prix this <coughs> afternoon. <coughs> well, as a, as a rider, we're thinking of the time. Um, so here's a pla an area where we can be quite tight back, but then we don't want to be too tight. We can't risk everything, you know. And then when we land over the vertical there, we have a seven or an eight to this double, 13A and B. Uh, going in, the vertical is very tall, but we also have this water under it. So again, that's going to catch the horse's eye. Um, I'm going to do an eight, um, try and come in very slow, get a patient jump in, and then don't push to jump the big ox or going out. Just sit quiet, give him time to get up in the air, and then it's six strides down to the last. Again, another very big oxer, but you know we got to trust our horses. 
How is your horse? Do you think he can do it this afternoon? Yeah, he's in great form. He's I haven't over jumped him this week. And um, we listen, we've had a lot of success together and I'm looking forward to it. The very best of luck. Thank you, Brendan. Well, Shane Breen is one of 15 Irish riders that will compete for the Longines Grand Prix. And we'll be back to watch the start of that after this commercial break.
Welcome back to the RDS where Billy Toomey on Vagabond de Forette is in the pocket waiting to enter the arena for the Longines Grand Prix. Jerry, some strong Irish riders here, two from the World Championships at Herning, as well as Connor Swale and Count Me In. Will there be an Irish winner? I, I would think we have a really good chance. Pacino Amiro with Bertram. Um, Connor can certainly do it. Keane. I think would have maybe a reasonable chance. The horse is a, is a very fit, strong horse, so we'll see. And the jump-off course suits him. We've got a couple of junior riders as well, Nicola. Big day for them. Max Watchman is 18, but so too is Neve McAvoy. That's right, yeah. It's um, a very exciting day for them and an incredible opportunity, especially for Neve to step up to this level. She has a, a beautiful mare, Temple Patrick went Welcome Limerick that she's been incredibly successful with this year, so I'm really rooting for her today. Well, Neve, or <laughs> uh, Neve is riding at 18 year old and she is about to enter the ring. Uh, Billy Toomey is about to come in. Parik, I'm sure you can see him, and Tom Frain is with you. Thank you very much, Ruby. Yes, the sun splashed scene here as we await the start of the day five feature. Just look down through the 40 participants there. It's an event that offers significant prestige and substantial prize money. Jack Ryan, one of the Irish challengers there, part of the Nations Cup squad, but didn't get to jump on the day. Dennis Lynch and Chris Denno. And also Keen O'Connor will always be a crowd favourite as he comes in as rider number 22. Connor Swale and Count Me In, the heroes of the Aga Khan, will be 28 to go. We've got Norwegian, British, Egyptian competitors, and Trevor Breen will be the last to go. We have the Breen brothers and the Coyle brothers in action this afternoon. So the fanfare sounds as the first of the riders comes into the arena. This is always one of the highlights of the week, and I can tell you that the crowds are thronged all around the vast RDS campus here. People of all ages in attendance here enjoying a day out. Well, Billy Toomey, not an easy task to be the first of the riders to go in. Billy from a Cork family steeped in the sport. Got valuable training at Michael Whittaker's Nottinghamshire Yard during his teenage years. He's riding Vagabond de Foray, Vagabond de Foray who was fourth in both the Sport Ireland Classic and the Anglesey Stakes. And by all accounts, it's a challenging course that Alan Wade is putting in front of the riders today. Yeah, there's 350,000 euros up for grabs here in the Longines International Grand Prix of Ireland. So this is serious stuff. Billy's a lot of experience, as he said. He's jumped numerous Grand Prix here. He's been in the running, been in the lineup plenty of times. So a lot of riders are going to be very watching what happens now they'll be watching the big screen outside and see how he gets on because alan wade has typically set a really challenging course for these riders as you can see time allowed is going to be influential a lot of big jumps out there but also really technical so we see billy now he's just getting organized as you say so we start off nice and gently heading up towards the pocket and then we turn back big triple bar here this is over two meters wide big jump and then short four strides, really one meter sixty tall vertical. And now move up, you can see Billy getting really stuck in. And then pops the water and then slows down one meter sixty. So that's really technical, really difficult line. And you can see Billy really organized. As I say, this man loads of experience. Been around. Jumps the combination, vertical coming out. Takes the eight strides up that distance, but just gets that too deep. And we spoke, we heard Shane talking about that line earlier on when he walked the course and the options that he has on it. Billy went for the eight. The riders will be watching that outside now. And now, difficult line here again. Comes up on the seven. Water tray, big oxer. And the last man's coming up. Super round. Round of four falls there, 78.05 seconds for Billy Toomey and Vagabond de Foray. The vertical after the combination was the fence that came down there. Yeah, we see him to the, to the water, gives the horse loads of encouragement. And spring heel, this is the vertical he had down. Just the horse towed him down there, just didn't get enough space. Paul O'Shea will be the next man in from Limerick, based in America, riding Scarra Glen's Mashu Pichu. Scarra Glen Stables is a thoroughbred breeding farm in Pennsylvania, and it was named after the Scarra Islands north of Scotland. It's been a hectic few days for this pair. They won the Sport Ireland Classic on the opening day of the horse show, collecting €8,000, and they also participated in the Anglesey Stakes on Thursday and didn't qualify for the jump-off. Yeah, Paul is uh, based now in America, as I said. 
a really competitive rider, has a great relationship with this horse. They've been together for a long time. Coming here on the back of a good win in the States two weeks ago and a good Grand Prix over there. Um, I know Paul would really like to come here and win this Grand Prix, particularly with this horse. He's had a lot of Nations Cup success with him, a lot of Grand Prix success, but he really wants to come home and do well. Starts off very well, but has that vertical down. He's going to keep up a real pace. He knows now top 25 percent coming back so he thinks a four, quick four falls might actually get him into the jump off so you'll see him really hurry up now try and get around beat the clock one meter 60 tall vertical there you can see after the water but these riders are so competent horses are so well trained they just sit up now here he comes to the combination ox are in two strides uses his scope one stride to the vertical He's going for the eight as well, but he makes it happen. And then five strides, really reaches out over that. And now one of these traditional turn backs, as you can see, back away from the pocket. So the horse just might get a little bit switched off. Paul really keeps him up to his job. Oh, what a fabulous stretch. Last fence, really quick, you can see there, 76.94. So just the one blemish on the round for Paul O'Shea and a well-deserved pat for Scaraglens Machu Pichu, a total of four falls and we won't be seeing them back for the jump off. And Daniel Coyle is the next participant from Derry made it into the final of the Puissance here last evening, riding Oak Grove's Carlisle, winner of the Grand Prix at Rotterdam in June, as well as winning events in Wellington, Vancouver, and uh, also another competition at Rotterdam. Yeah, part of the Olympic qualification winning team at the World Championships just recently in Denmark. So coming here with a lot of form, really talented rider. Great to see him with a proper string of horses now. A proper force we recommend, really competitive rider. So he gets underway here. Jumps that tall vertical, the long jeans with a little light plank on top, flat cup, really careful. Now turns back to the triple bar. Big stretch. And we say this is a short distance. And now gets ready for the water. Quiet, he's very patient to it. Big stretch from the horse. And now look at the control that he has. Now you can see, moves up the pace. He will be aware of the time allowed. Gets organized for the combination. Horses his ears pricked, he knows what's coming up. That's really good, two strides, good press. Keeps him balanced. Yeah, stays nice and wide, makes that curve line, bending line nice and, nice and wide for himself, give himself the room to jump the fence. And look, lovely and tight back here. He's not gonna lose any time in the corner. we go this could be our first clear round adds up an extra stride really careful to the last but didn't, no. take, didn't take long for our time faults yes three penalties arriving in there so having put in a perfect round of jumping at just the time penalties caught up with them yeah look that's what happens here at this Grand Prix so the time allowed is always going to be influential if you give these riders the time and let them take their time on the course they'll jump it every day of the week but you've got to get around within the time prescribed by the course builder and that's what he does so he takes the time and time makes it tight makes you hustle makes you rush don't add up the strides and as a result three time penalties began Moissonnier of France is in the arena now riding Cordial this was the Nations Cup combination from Friday jumping eight falls in round one and then they had a clear round second time round begins Father Bernard is a top show jumper, and she herself jumped at Mill Street in the European Young Riders Championship six years ago. Yes, yeah, this is a big 13 year old Holsteiner by Casal. Big, scopey horse. We watched him the other day, jumped a fabulous clear in the second round. Big striding horse, big, powerful horse. But they have a great look at that for scope. They have a great rapport. Keeps them nice and organized now. Look, this fellow won't be caught for scope. He's got all the jump in the world. McGann's job is just to try and keep him organised, don't let it unravel. Nice and forward to the triple bar now, she's got a whoa, 
Whoa, listen, good man. Now, I'm gonna get ready for the water, so she sends him at it. Big jump, and now, hang on, wait, wait, wait. Gives him the space, and you look how he really tries. He sits back on his ox. Ear is pricked, he's loving his job. Right, combination coming up. Big ox are in. Two strides. Big ox are again, big stretch. One stride to the tall vertical, and you can see how she stays out nice and wide on that line. She knows her horse is a huge stride. This is looking really good. Now again, she knows the time allowed is tight, so she really moves up around the corner. Has to be brave here. And now she's gonna come up the inside. Comes up on the six strides, knows he's got a huge stride. Here we go. And we're gonna have our first clear, I think. Fantastic. Nicely done in a time of 79.33. Nigam Moussonnier of France posts the first clear round, just four riders into the event. And we've clear on the board. Fantastic. You see her here to the triple bar. This horse is such a gentleman. Big stallion, but he puts in such an effort for this for his jockey. You can see, look how he uses himself. Brilliant. Big shot here, the combination. Look, ears pricked. Super stuff. British rider William Whitaker is in now riding the Grey Gall Tour. The 2016 Hickstead Derby winner William, third member of his family to win that prestigious event. He's three horses with him at the RDS, competing this week as an individual rider. Gall Tour was seventh in the Dublin Stakes yesterday, had four falls in round one. Yeah, he's been a busy man. We had him judging the four-year-olds here yesterday. He was outstanding. Literally just sat up on three young horses he'd never seen before. Gave him a couple of practice jumps and then just jumped the course of fences. Went in there and had a chat with Nick Skelton. And they were able to pick a beautiful horse from Marion Hughes's, ridden by Mikey Pender. And then he was in last night in the Puissance where he had a really good run. He was there to the very end. Didn't quite make it. Oh, his Grand Prix not going to last too much longer. Has an early fence down. When well, you see now, he's going to move up the pace and see maybe can he get in with a fast four falls. It's a 12-year-old, so you've got to enjoy this experience now, give him a little bit of mileage. It's not often you get a chance to jump in these massive big arenas. So maybe the atmosphere is getting to him a little bit now. So lines up the combination. Very good. You can see how athletic this horse is. going to use this now give his horse plenty my plenty experience coming up for the last line so you can see he stays nice and patient on that adds up to seven strides a nice quiet six on the way home and there's a time penalty as well so a total uh, for William Whitaker goal tour completing his round there Yeah, we can see him here. Just jumps the fence, but doesn't get his back end out of the way quick enough. He just catches it with his heels, and it's gone. Shane Sweetenham is the next rider in, 22nd in the world rankings, riding James Can Cruz. We saw this pair in action in the Aga Khan on Friday afternoon. They had a clear round, and one fence down then in round two. Shane is a cousin of former Ireland rugby international Donica Ryan and competed for Ireland at the Tokyo Olympics last year. Yeah, this is a real talking horse. He's burst onto the scene this year with Shane and has been outstanding. Clear and four here on Friday, part of that Aga Khan winning team. He's only a nine-year-old, formerly ridden by Francis Connors, produced here in Ireland, bred in Ireland, produced in Ireland. And now Shane's taken on the ride. And you can see scope, athleticism. This guy has it all. This is a real horse for the future. And look, He's got the right man on his back, loads of experience. Gives the horse all the confidence he needs. So, he really wants to come here now. He's had a fantastic show already. But he wants to add this Grand Prix to his list. Now, brave to the water, but look at the way the horse just goes high and reaches. Huge control. Down that, that vertical after the water is 1 meter 60 high. It's huge. He just floats down there. So, combination coming up here now. Oxer in. 
You know, James Cam Cruz just getting a little bit unruly. Shane's going to have to stay nice and wide here now, give him space. Very well done. But look, he really trusts the horse. You can see how patient he is. Now he drops back really quickly. He'll have the clock working in his head. He knows exactly where he needs to be. Comes up on the seven strides. Knows he can reach that back rail. And up on the six, last fence to jump. Is he going to be? No. Yes, fantastic. Makes it inside the time as well. Fantastically around there for Shane Sweetnam. 80.74 seconds. He salutes the crowd as well. And James Count Cruz, certainly a horse for the big day and the big crowd, thriving in the atmosphere of the RDS. Yeah, you can see this. Look, ears pricked. He's got scope. He's careful. He's so athletic. You can see his ears just flicking back, just listening to Shane. It's a fabulous shot. You can see how he uses himself. Comes up through his shoulder. And then Shane just puts him in the right place and lets him at it. We have another Shane now. This is Shane Breen. His brother Trevor will be uh, competing later on. Shane riding Ipswich. This is the 2019 Grand Prix winning combination. The last Grand Prix here before COVID. They'd hardly have envisaged that it would be three years before they'd be back to defend their title. Shane, a three-time winner of the Queen Elizabeth Cup at Hickstead. Yeah, as you say, he won this the last time we were here. He has a great rapport with this horse. They've been very competitive over the years. They've won GCT Grand Prix, five-star Grand Prix. Always a force to be reckoned with. You can see, you can hear him when he's given the brief on walking the course. He had a plan. Ipswich wasn't listening to the plan, though. He looks very strong. He's had an early fence down now, so Shane's going to try, as you say, go for a quick four falls, and maybe get back into the jump off. If not, hopefully pick up some prize money at the tail end. I think we have a very strong partnerships early in this start list. So I'm not surprised we've already got two clears, but I won't be surprised if we don't get clears for another while. Um, I know people might think we're going to have eight or ten, but I don't think so. Big combination here, but you can see Ipswich really strong. He's a really enthusiastic horse. Shane has his work cut out, keeping him controlled. That's very well done. Now wait for the five. Yeah, Shane's making that look easy, but it's anything but. So quick back to this tall vertical gonna have to take a chance keep coming he comes on the eight strides has a little rub going in oh just gets caught up on the back rail that was a pity look he was trying to be home quickly and just unravel a little bit on the last line a total of 12 falls for Shane Breen so it's high time that we take a commercial break
And welcome back to the RDS, where Edouard Schmitz of Switzerland is currently in action in the Nanjing International Grand Prix. Just two clear rounds so far in the competition. Yeah, he set up really positively, really energetic horse, but he's so careful. He looks like we're going to have another clear round. Should be good for the time as well. Brilliant. There we go. So Edouard Schmitz completes the course in 78.97 seconds and joins Miguel Massonnier and Shane Sweetnam as the three riders who've posted clear rounds in the Grand Prix so far. Yeah, and it's only a 10-year-old. You can see really forward, attacks the fences, but he trusts his horse so much, lets him on down to the fence, knows that he's going to back up and stays really careful all the time. Yep. Up in the hue and cry. Delighted with that. Well, this is a man who's competed in Dublin on numerous occasions through the years. Steve Gerda of Switzerland, the former world number one and the 2012 Olympic champion. He's riding Abu Furhan's Maddox, who was second in the 160 class in Aachen and also jumped in the Rolex Grand Prix at Dinar. Yeah, this is one of the superstars of show jumping. Has a huge following. He's a former world number one, never very far from it. Hasn't put the Dublin Grand Prix on his list of successes to date he's won practically everything else so i'm sure he's here wants to get his hand on this we have a roll of honor wall up there in the rider's pocket and he wants to put his name on it um, just a most stylish rider has a fantastic empathy with his horses you can see this is lovely mare really active in her way of going Back. oh he's had a fence down as you say that triple bar just Dragging down the distance, goes very high over the water. Now we'll see him speed off. No, second fence down, so he knows he's not going to get back now. So, just takes his time and decides it's going to be another day for this horse. He's going to give her a pass. Pops the second fence again. He's on his way out. So Steve Gerda opts to retire from the competition. Eight falls on the board, saving the horse for another day out, bringing an end to his involvement in the Grand Prix. Yeah, just not happening for him today. You can see, has that fence down. Maddox is just a little bit unruly today. And look, he's a master craftsman. Does a great job. Jack Ryan is next in from Kilkenny, working in Belgium with Olympic gold medalist and former world champion Los Lansic. Jack was part of the Irish squad for the Aga Khan, although he didn't get to jump. I'm sure his day will come. Riding BBS McGregor, who was a runner-up in the World Cup qualifier in the UAE. Yeah, this is a great story. They bred this horse at home. They brought him up through the stud book series, the Horseport Ireland stud book series. He was successful as a four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old. He's jumped here in Dublin all the way through in the age classes. This young man and him have such a partnership. They were fantastic in Hickstead. Um, horse looks at picture, as you say, he's now over with Joss Lansick. And uh, working with the best in the world, but he's been just a force of nature, this pair. He's a really quality horse. In fairness to, to Jack and his family, they've resisted every offer to sell him. Everybody's tried to buy him. When the army tried to buy him, oh, he said an early fence down. It's a little bit unruly, he shook his head there. Jack was trying to get him to wait up. Comes to the triple bar now. But look, this is a young combination. Jack's a really talented young rider, and he will be back. Oh, you can't be getting into these arenas, jumping these tracks. So he's, he wants to come around now and keep it all together. Big combination coming up. You can see McGregor pricks his ears. Huge scope. Look where he puts his front legs up under his chin. Clips the back rail there, but I think this is just a little bit of inexperience. But don't be surprised if you see these guys back here in the future winning this Grand Prix. Really talented horse. And as they say, they bred him, trained him. So all the supporters will be here watching him. Look, Alan Way has set a real test. Fence is falling early, fences fall late. Total of 12 falls there, 78.74 seconds for Jack Ryan. 
You can see him coming down here. He's just shaking his head. Jack is sitting up, trying to make that get enough space to jump the fence into the combination. Very good in and just the slightest tap on the back rail and it's gone. This is Marc Dilassé of France. Went up against Conor Swale in the jump off for the Nations Cup on Friday. Shaman Haas is the horse, second in the class at Hickstead, third in the Grand Prix qualifier in Falsterbo. Yeah, he was on. He was the man that went in and Hickstead to win the Nations Cup for them there a couple of weeks ago. So, really competitive rider. He came out the wrong side. Conor Swale was in some fantastic form here on Friday. And I'm not sure what Mark would have to do to beat Connor. actually, to be fair. Connor's horse was just on fire, so he's here in the Grand Prix, riding a different horse. He saved this one out for the Grand Prix, so he's going to be nice and fresh. Wants to get these first few fences out of the way. Get this difficult line here, tall, vertical. And you can see, just the horse gives him the space, but the horse just dives at it a little bit and catches the top rail. As you said, 1 meter 60, back towards the pocket. Sitting on flat cups, it's a very difficult fence to jump. Good over the water. Really trusts his horse down to six strides. And now you can see he just gets organized for the combination. Mark has that really forward way of riding. Keeps his horse out in front of him. Keeps the revs up all the time. Very good there. And you can see how he just lands, waits a little bit. It's not the biggest stride. Oh, what a late falling pole. Doesn't have the longest stride in the world. So he's going to come up the inside here, I would imagine. So the riders are given options on the course here. Yeah, he's had a look. Save his horse for another day. So with four fences down, Mark Delesse opts to retire and not complete the course in the Grand Prix, the second retirement we've had. You see him down here on the triple bar, then just comes out to that 1 meter 60 vertical, just catches it behind. This is a difficult fence, you can see the long jeans and you can see the yellow cup on the right hand side, how flat those cups are, how light they are, and watch this, rolls back in, then just falls out. At the last second, well, Next up, Martin Fuchs of Switzerland. This pair helped Switzerland claim third place in the Nations Cup here on Friday afternoon. Martin, the current world champion. And Connor Jabe jumped two clear rounds on Friday, and Martin has said it is a really exciting horse. Yeah, again, look, it's another superstar. Most people remember him riding Clooney. Sean Bard is his groom um, from Step Aside. Liz, his mum, and another one with an early fence down. Going to be. Well, look, put in a huge effort here on Friday. Jumped a double clear in the Aga Khan. Had a rest day yesterday, so back into this ring again. You know, these horses are not machines, to be fair. Yeah, you can see now he ups the pace. Ooh. Oh, the horse is really careful galloped down to that and just really backed off it so just shaking his head a little bit combination oxer huge scope look at the jump look at the stretch and the reach that he has argues a little bit but really settles into his job once he decides which fence he's going to jump you can see pricks his ears goes yeah i'm on it Seven strides down there. Really talented horse. So one fence down, a total of four faults there for Martin Fuchs and Connor. It's the second fence that came astray there and particularly impressive over the combination, but the early error are costly. Absolutely, not only an 11 year old, so a horse with a really bright future. Look, Martin will be at the best shows in the world, but you can see how much use he has, how athletic the horse is. France, and we remain with just three clear rounds on the board so far. This is Alexander Butler, another of the Irish participants, 34-year-old from Kells in County Meath. We would have seen Alexander in action in that dramatic puissance here last evening. The horse TMO was eighth in last year's Grand Prix at Cronenberg.
Yeah, different, different horses than last night, of course. Those Buissons horses are specialists in their own right. Alexander, loads of experience based over in Belgium now. And you can see the horse has a, like a hood on his head with him and an earpiece. So that just gives him a little bit of support and it helps to kind of just deaden the atmosphere here a little bit. Horses can be a little bit calmer with it. You can see he's got quite a big bridle on the horse. So he's got a long shank fiddly, made up of a hackamore. Whoa, bit of a misunderstanding there. Yeah, look, Alexander just gives him a patch. You can see he has a snaffle bridle, but he also has a hackamore for that extra control. This horse obviously can get very strong. So, Alexander is just going to jump the first fence again. Something caught his eye back there, and he wasn't sure about it. And look, he's a real horseman. Rides a lot of horses, looks after his horses. They mean an awful lot to him. So he knows this is not his day. So back out regroup reorganize you can see here he's just coming down alexander sitting really quiet on a little bit of an angle horse just locked up by the looks of it and didn't put his eye on the fence the way he wanted him to so alexander retires and laura kraus comes into the arena u.s star three times an olympian partner of nick skelton the u.s team that won gold at the 2008 olympics silver medalist in Tokyo, we talk about stars, she's certainly one of them, Tom. Oh, absolutely, and look, most people pat their horse and they're finished around. We see Laura coming in, she's talking to him, giving him a pat. These are 50, he's a 15-year-old, great partnership. Um, Nick's name is on the wall four times, I think, in there, I was looking at it. He won it with Phoenix Park, he won it with a few, he won it twice with Phoenix Park, back-to-back -back wins, so I'm sure Laura would like the bragging rights. She's won a lot of big classes. She's on a Naga Khan winning team here. She knows what it's about. So this lady is a serious competitor. And if she gets into the jump off, you can be guaranteed. You'll have to go flat out to beat her because she will leave nothing for you. So this starts off really well. You can see that lovely American style. Nice long rein. Let's the horse travel. Great control. This horse just knows what she's thinking all the time. She doesn't have to do a lot. As I say, this partnership is well cemented. They know each other so well. You can see how she gives them every chance to jump the fences. It's brilliant. Okay, nice and steady here. Whoa, give him space. Gets the room, then gives the horse a little bit of room to it, a little bit of encouragement to make the back rail. She's not hanging around either. Eye on the fence, nice and straight. Jump stays. Comes up on the seven, you can see she keeps coming forward. Look at that. Brilliant, here we go, last fence. Brilliant stuff. And just inside the time. By a whisker, the time allowed is 81 seconds, 80.78 seconds, posted by Laura Kraut, a stylish and elegant round of jumping from the grey Kung Fu. Here we see, look at this. That's how it's meant to be done. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, look, she's a fantastic rider. Pops a combination here. You know, you talk about put, making this job easy for the horses. She's a superb rider, has a great empathy, looks after horses. Joining us now, That's four clear rounds now as Kevin Stout of France comes into the main arena. The 42 year old, currently 14th in the FEI World Rankings, competed at the World Championships last week in Denmark. He's riding Bond, James Bond de Hay, who was third in the Sport Ireland Classic. Yeah, fantastic competitor. Uh, regularly on the French team, I think he's one of the first names that the chef puts down every time. Always steps up, always wants to be part of these big occasions. Uh, really stylish rider, former world number one. Has Olympic medals, world championships, you name it, he has it in the locker. But he wants to put the Dublin Grand Prix on it as well. Again, you can see that lovely forward flowing style that he has. Really good lower leg position. And he's had that fence down as well. They say that's a difficult line. Hard to know what your horse is going to do sometimes at the triple bar. They can really be carry down the distance. And I think he may have had a foot in the water as well. I'm not sure. Sets up for the combination now. Great expression on the horse. You can see his ears pricked. Big horse. Carries himself beautifully. You can see out in front. Travels down to the fence still listens to, to Kevin 
big counter by Di Montesemeli. Really popular stallion. Oh, look at that. Just hung in the air a little bit. So I'd be disappointed with that. Three fences down for Kevin Stout. 77.80 seconds. Vertical after the triple bar was the first to go, then a foot in the water and the second part of the double. Yeah, like didn't, a couple, couple of very small mistakes. It just got really costly. Didn't get any rub of the green at all. You can see here, horse really tries, tucks his legs up underneath him and barely clips that back rail. Now the Irish fans will be paying particular interest to this next round. Bertram Allen in, riding Pacino Amiro. Bertram, of course, a Wexford man based in Germany. Won the Grand Prix here in 2014 when he was riding Molly Malone, a Tokyo Olympian, and helped Ireland qualify for the Paris Olympics 2024 just last week. Yeah, this is a 10-year-old, bred in Ireland. Produced. Kenny Graham rode it initially. Now Bertram has the ride on it. Aidan McGrory owns it. They've been to Tokyo, they've been to the Olympics. They went to Denmark to the World Championships. He was part of that team that secured Olympic qualification. He's won the Grand Prix here before. This will be a lot of people's favourites for this, this class today. Uh, again, Bertram is very, very quick against the clock. So if he can get into the jump off, he knows exactly what it means and what it'll take to win this class. Has a little rub there. So a little bit of luck earlier on, but look, that's sport. And you need a little bit of luck every now and then. Now he needs to come back off this. The horse is very good there. So the triple bar, as you say, comes nice and forward to it. And then gets him back, gets him on, anchored. Now sets up for the water, then encourages him. Real stretch. And now watch how he just trusts him, gives him loads of space. He knows this horse is a big jumper. Now. Shortens his reins, gets himself organized, takes a little bit of time here for the combination. He knows this is going to take a bit of jumping. Two strikes. Holds him off the rail. Holds him off the vertical. Now gets organized. Whoa. Come back here. And now five, two, three, four. So did it early. Ah, just got caught out, as I say. Of course, Biller here is making life difficult for these guys. Down the last line. Pops in here, now has to reach for the back rail again, and then six strides home. He's good on the clock, he'll be really disappointed with that, he wanted to come back here. Great round. Sure was just the officer, fence 11 down for Bertram Allen there. 78.61 seconds, a total of four falls. Yeah, look, that was a super round. As I say, he's only a 10-year-old, he's going to win some Grand Prix over the next couple of years, watch that space. Yeah, look, actually, Bertram did a great job there. Jumped that narrow vertical, sat up, made the adjustment, and then just almost overdid it, to be honest. So, look, he'll be back, and I'm sure he's already on a winning Aga Khan team. He's going to have his name on that trophy in the Grand Prix in the near future. This is Dennis Lynch riding Cristello. Dennis originally wanted to be a jump jockey, but was told that he was too tall and too heavy. Cristello has given solid showings in Rotterdam, Leipzig, and Rome. Yeah, here, what can we say about Dennis? He's won in every big arena in the world. Hugely competitive rider, but really enthusiastic. Costello's a little too, too enthusiastic today, I'm afraid, and he's had an early fence down. Dennis will be disappointed. He really wanted to be here in the shake-up. He'd love to be on the Aga Khan team. He was on the Nations Cup team, or the, the Irish team that were at the World Championships, so he did his job there two weeks ago. I was chatting to him there, and he was really happy that they got the job done there at the same time he was a wasn't too happy he didn't get a medal he knew how close they were to getting silver or a bronze in Hen herring so Costello now is really strong big stretch you see Dennis has to sit back and really work hard to create the space he needs very well done there but just got to drag them up there up to the front rail and then wasn't able to get his legs out of the way for the back one so two fences down now i think dennis is going to call it a day and retire it's another retirement dennis lynch decides that he won't be participating any further in the grand prix yeah look we, we see the horses come in here and the effort that they put in so rejoin us at the RDS for continuing coverage of the Grand Prix after this break.
welcome back to the RDS action continuing. We're at the midway point of the Longines International Grand Prix. This is Patrick Lemon of the Netherlands, who's clear so far. Yes, getting ready for the last line. Lovely big horse, 13 year old by San Remo. So keeps him organized now into the double. Reaches for the back rail, but has the front rail. He was a bit worried about the back one, had the front one instead. So another one out of the jump off. Second part of the double goes down, and a total of four falls, 80.12 seconds for Exit Remo. 81 seconds to remind you the time allowed. Yeah, you can see big effort here. Look, gets a press on. Horse just a little bit slow with his front legs. Got high enough, but just needed to be a little bit snappier with those front ones. We have four clear rounds so far. Megan Mossonnier, Shane Sweetnam, Edward Schmitz, and Laura Kraut have gone clear. This is Mark McCauley, a loud man, 35 years of age, riding Jasko van de Bishop. His parents, John and Sarah, were both show jumpers at international level, so his own breeding particularly strong. Yeah, very stylish rider. Love watching Mark ride his horses or go so beautifully for him. Um, he's had this horse now a number of years, so really cemented their partnership, and I think he's due a little bit of luck. He's jumped on a lot of good teams. Jumped a lot of big Grand Prix, very competitive. And I'd say his day is going to come fairly soon if it hasn't, if today's not it. Oh, he's had a good rub there on that Hoxer. Turned up very tight. He was obviously very conscious of the clock. Took a chance there. So he needs to just keep it now together. Make the adjustments when necessary. Keep up a nice rhythm. You can see his horse is very organized. Mark doing a great job there. Now sends him at the water, gives him all the encouragement, lets him stretch over it. Unfortunately, just misjudged it a little bit and came down on the tape. So had a bit of luck earlier, ran out of luck there, I'm afraid. Now comes to the oxer, into the combination, two strides. You can see Mark sits there. Absolutely perfect. Thing. Textbook position. Allows the horse to jump. Makes that look very, very easy. Now, won't hang around. Knows with only four clears. Last four falter could get him some money. Nice and brave down to the double. Comes in well. Horse really good there. You can see. Pricks his ears and gallops down to the last. Very unlucky. Four falls picked up with a water jump by Mark McCauley. Time 78.83 seconds. Yeah, he gives his horse a pat, he knows he's put in a really good effort here. Jumps that vertical, had a little rub at it, and watches how unlucky was that. Horse just put his leg underneath him and tipped it. 2012 Olympic bronze medalist Keen O'Connor is now in the arena. Member of four Aga Khan winning teams, 2004, 2012, 2015, and just last Friday. He was quite emotional after Ireland's success here on Friday afternoon. This horse CVR2, owned by Susan Magnier, and was second in the Anglesey Stakes on Thursday. Yeah, Keane, look, when, he, when you needed a man to be the anchor man to jump a clear round to get into the jump off, there was no matter man to have on your side. Came in and nailed it here on Friday afternoon. It was brilliant. Really got the atmosphere going. People were delighted. This is a really interesting mare, written previously by David Wills. It's a 13 year old, owned now by Susan Magner. Um, Keen likes this mare a lot. She's very scopy, very competitive. Give a real string, real strong addition to his string. So Kilkenny jumped on the cuff here on Friday. And great to have a horse of this caliber to pull back out as your backup for the Grand Prix. So nice and organized, as you say. Keen always meticulously prepared, master tactician, has his horses produced, leaves nothing to chance. Has the most beautiful setup out in Carswood out in County Mead, where he does a lot of training. Ah, CVR wasn't really listening to him there. You can see she just got her head up in the air. Didn't give herself a chance to jump that fence the way she can. So he's gonna keep coming now. You can see, sits really quiet, lovely quiet hands. Mare just keeps her head in the same in the air a little bit. Keen pops in, keeps his leg on, supports her off the ground. There, how well does he do that? And she just again, she just dives at it on him. So now 
He decided he's going to retire as well. There will be another day. Vertical after the triple bar and offence after the combination. And with eight on the board, Keen O'Connor calls it a day, salutes the crowd. Yeah, he's had a great show. Look, he's after winning another egg at Cairn and himself and Max were part of that team. So they've worked really hard to get here. So he'd be delighted with his week. So you can see it doesn't take much on flat cups. Gives the crowd a wave. It's a huge crowd, as I say, around the arena again. They've piled in. We've had fantastic sport here all week. Great drama for sure. Julian Gaunt of France is next in. Julian is a qualified maths teacher and relaxation therapist, as well as an expert in animal behaviour. This is seen as his top horse. Jumped in the Nations Cup in Sopot and was runner-up in the class at Hickstead as well. Well, let's see now if Julian can work out the mathematics of getting around Alan Wade's really technical course here today. As you say, start off over the first fence, down to the second, and then, then we start getting the, the abacus out as you try to work out the stride patterns to get yourself around this really technical track, as I say, inside the time allowed of 81 seconds. So he's clear one and two, keeps it nice and balanced, nice and organized, and now gets let's get the horses sit up and listen, don't dive, and gets a one meter 60 vertical heading back down to the pocket out of the way. So here comes the next challenge, triple bar, and then four strides. So not doing too bad at this stage. Now, down to the water, and this is going to open the horse up. But this guy is huge on the scope. Just pops the water like it's a photo. It's four meters wide, I think. Now you can see he's getting a little bit quicker. He's conscious of the time. He knows his horse is not the fastest, I think, across the ground. And jumps so high, he actually practically loses a bit of time in the air. So now this is a tricky line. He's popped this narrow vertical, really tall. And get five strides up here, don't get dragged in. Does that very well. So, keeps his breath, holds his breath, jump this vertical, and what's he gonna do now, inside or outside? Moves up on the seven. Oh, here we go. And he gets caught out on that back rail. The second last fence comes down with a total of eight faults there for Julien Gaul. It's going so well. Yeah, he made the decision, as I say, it's really technical here. Second last line, number fence number 13 is this long jeans double. Vertical coming in. Ox are coming out, as you can see here. Jumps the vertical on the bending line. Just can't get the stretch for that back rail. You can see, look, just catches it with his toes. Four faults there, and Max Watchman comes in now for Ireland. Next major date in Max's diary will be the 2nd of September. He'll be getting his leaving cert results along with his brother Tom. Proud showing their appreciation for Max, who was here in action in the Nations Cup on Friday, riding today Quintini. Yeah, this is a 13 year old by Quintender. Barlux did his job on Friday, so it's this guy's turn now. As I say, this is a rising star. Already a winner of an Aga Khan. Been on a couple of winning Nations Cup teams. And this is a really energetic horse. You can see really active canter. You can see it's high carriage in front. Ears pricked. Gets his knees up under his chin. You can see how that hind leg is pushing him under all the time. Yeah, I just got a little bit close to that oxer, to that vertical. Whoa, sit up, sit up. Good lad, well ridden, that's fantastic. Look. Horse tipped after jumping the water. Max got him, got shifted a little bit. Straight away recovered now. Gets organized for this big combination. In well, two strides. Supports him, balances him. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight strides up there. Now five. Ah, perfect. Uh, and a big water tray under that. So this horse maybe just doesn't have the experience of jumping these fences. Just got his eye on the water distracted him for a second another horse you can see with a little mesh nose piece oh. that's a big oxer on the way out Max doing everything he can I think this horse is just maybe a day off this class today Max has done a super job he's had a fantastic show jumped around here on Friday and was foot perfect so young man is going to go home and regroup from this and be sure he will be back here con as a contender in these Grand Prix in the future you can see here, jumps the water, look, horse paddles a little bit. Max regroups straight away. And now on this last line, 
Yeah, as you can just see, top rail flies away. Horse never even looked at it, got distracted by the water. A total of 15 penalties there for Max Watchman. And it brings us on to Edouard Levy of France, the next Jordan competitor Jordan coming in. France. This is the same horse and rider that we saw in action for France in the Nations Cup, Uno de Sarisi, the horse. Edouard is 28 years of age from Deauville, trained under the guidance of Patrice Delabeau and Ludger Beerbohm. And had a winner already here today, Edouard winning the Listney Speed Championship ahead of Jordan Coyle and Mikey Pender. Yeah, great class earlier on today, Speed Championship, so this is a lot bigger than that now. Different test completely, much more technical. As I say, Alan Wills, after building a very sophisticated course, you can see how it just unravels as you go along, and the horses, some of these horses get discombobulated. You can see they just get disorganized. He opens, he closes them. It is a challenge. Now, it's a really nice horse. 14-year-old, lots of experience. Lovely athletic type. You can see the way it covers the ground. Great use of itself. Now, keeps organized. Big triple bar, two meters wide. Lovely, careful horse. You can see how he really stretches. Jumps the water very easily. Now, six strides down here. And you can see how the horse himself just sits up in front of the jump. That's what you want him to do. Now, combination very forward in on oh, the horse again just backs up you can see how he pats his feet off the ground it's fabulous the way he does it nice and close to this doesn't want to get too carried in too far and then gives a little shake of the reins conscious of the time doesn't want to get too wide down there can't afford to lose any time comes up on the seven Big stretch now, can he make it? Yes. And the last fence, he's a mile off it, but it doesn't matter. Inside the time allowed, just about. Yeah, he scraped in 81 seconds, allowed his time 80.66 seconds. Edouard Levy becoming the fifth combination now to produce a clear round. Yeah, look, that was foot perfect. He managed that impeccably. Gave his horse every chance, but he's a brilliant horse. Look how far he is away off that oxer but really tries, horses, fantastic, he's a superstar. Angel von Essen from Switzerland is next in, is with the Swedish team at Hickstead, posting eight falls in both rounds. This horse, Daniel, has produced some good performances, including one at Windsor. Yeah, by heartbreaker, 14-year-old, been around a bit, jumped in the Nations Cup Series, so plenty of experience, lovely big horse, fabulous expression, look at his, look at his ears pricked. Angeli does a fantastic job on this. Really stylish rider. Ooh, she's brave there. She really trusts this horse. She knows him so well. Lovely rhythm to his canter, you can see. Doesn't lose any time on the corners. Very rideable, real control. And you can see how he listens to her. Ooh, goes high, makes it. Now, this is the first chance you get now just to Give yourself a second, get organized again. Big combination coming up, lovely canter. You can see the way he pricks his ears, sees where he's going, puts his knees up under his chin, really stretches. Oh, that's so unlucky. She'd done everything up to this, perfect. Just turns back up for the last line now. And just gets a little crooked to that fence, didn't straighten up just as much as she would have liked, was obviously conscious at the time. Last fence coming up, beautiful horse. So there's a time penalty as well, so 81.39 seconds, a total of nine penalties there for Anjali Van Essen. had the vertical after the combination down, that was the first one to fall. As you say, really technical track. It was a great effort for Anjali, and he's a beautiful horse. You can see just a little bit crooked coming into it. And just misjudged the top hole. Dutch rider Lars Kirsten will be next to compete, riding Emerton. Lars is a leading Dutch rider. This pair were representing the Netherlands in the Aga Khan on Friday. They finished fourth. Emerton jumped four faults in the first round and then a really top quality clear round in the second round. Beautiful quality horse, another 13 year old, so plenty of experience. Real athletic type, you can see again, 
you know, real quality canter, very light on his feet. Loads of scope and great use of himself. You can see how he pushes himself down the arena, so light, so elegant, and just gets at that fence. I say Alan really cleverly starts him off coming down the arena, and then, you know, these horses have jumped here now for a few days, so they know where the pocket is, and they just, they just tend to travel a little bit freer back towards the gate, and he just knows that, and the horse just gets dragged down to the fence a bit more than what he wants. So, wants to get a nice performance now. You know, like anything, any athlete, these horses need to be match, match fit as well. So, you know, some of the riders will decide to retire if they had a couple of fences down. But then there's plenty of riders will try and keep coming, give the horse the experience, something to learn from. They'll come back then, they'll watch the videos, they'll analyse what's happened. They'll look at it and they'll come back and they'll train, maybe change the bridle, maybe need a little bit more control. You know, do a bit of work on that. And like I've seen the guys come back after shows and if they had a difficult line that they struggled with, they'll go home and build that at home and then actually train it. So the next time they meet that challenge, they'll know exactly what to do. And that's the kind of preparation these guys do. And that's why they're so good at it. Two fences down, eight bolts on the board. For Emerton, you see here, they say, just trying to keep him back off the fence. He just gets dragged Andrew in that now. bit too close. Just barely touches that with his heels. And we're expecting a big cheer to go up as Connor Swain is introduced to the crowd and count me in. Count me in, jump three clear rounds if you don't mind in the Aga Khan. The crowd showing their appreciation. Connor, over 30 years now involved as a professional rider. Yeah, what happened here on Friday was just the best of sport. You know, we we had everybody on the edge of their seats. Connor came in in the jump off and just was unbeatable. This is an extraordinary horse. It's so athletic. He's put in a serious shift here on Friday. As I say, he's already jumped three rounds, but you look at him, ears pricked, wants to get on with the job, knows exactly what he's got to do. Connor, of course, loads of experience really talented one of the best riders in the world pound for pound any day of the week anybody who's ever had to compete against him know how competitive he is how quick he is against the clock look how balanced he is there and as I say he has a superstar of a horse now so rank number four in the world perfect down here now and squeeze great technique Keep it together now. This track gets more difficult as you get close to the end. A little bit of fatigue sets in. Just keep your concentration, keep the horse's concentration. Conscious of the time. You say it comes up the inside now. Water underneath this. Here we go. Adds up to seven. He's a mile off it, but it doesn't matter. He's a star, all right. 79. 0.11 seconds for Connor Swale, producing a magnificent clear round there at the world number four from County Down, and ensuring that he'll be back for the jump off. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Look at this horse, he's a, say, he's a superstar, and I think he knows it. Look, ears break, canters out of the ring. Absolutely foot perfect on this line. Yeah, Connor just shakes his arms at him a little bit, make sure he gets there. That's a big oxer. Look how high he gets. Brilliant. Six horses now have produced clear rounds as we go on to our 29th competitor. This is Jordan Coyle. We would have seen Jordan last night in the Puissance. He's won over $1 million since moving to the US in 2017. Derryman is the older of the two Coyle brothers. Lives on a 250-acre farm with his fiancée, Kim. Yeah, as I say, it's great for the guys to come back here. They love coming back to Ireland. They've brought some really nice horses. They're really competitive. And he starts off really nice. This is a real blood athletic horse. As you say, ears brick looking for the fence in front of him. Super use of himself. Just needs to slow down a little. And that's what the challenge is. Oh, he's a bit slow to the water, but he makes it. Yeah, Jordan just having his work cut out now. Onto the combination. Really good in. 
Gives him a little bit of a squeeze. And then sits up for the last part. Tall vertical, narrow fence here now. Makes some space, does that. And you can see what happens with the water tray again. Has to make the adjustment. Still needs to worry about getting enough power on to jump the fence. And you've got to get everything 100% right to get around this difficult track. Jumps the oxer. Just chips down on the back rail. So, as I say, just unravels a little bit from as he gets up closer to the end. 16 faults on the board for Jordan Coyle. 76.80 seconds. The time for the Derryman there. Great shot here. You see where his heels are. Just barely touches it. Another Irish competitor in now, Andrew Burns, 39-year-old from Galway, just outside the 100 in the world. He was on the Irish team that won the Nations Cup in Wellington, then repeated the trick in Vancouver. Also competed at Hickstead. Horse he's riding here is Sea Top Blue, a horse that jumped a double clear for the winning Irish team at Vancouver in the Nations Cup earlier this year. Yeah, Andrew comes here on a really strong form. Um, a lot of confidence, loves this horse. They, his parents, unfortunately, his mum passed away there recently, but herself and Richard bought this horse in the Cavan Foal auction. So they've had him a long time. They've refused a lot of offers to sell him. And Andrew now has taken him all the way to the top. And I'm sure the family had a lot of fun out of watching him. Um, his mum was a great supporter of Irish show jumping. Uh, great eye for a horse and a really good trainer to boot. And she'll be watching down so he's had a lot of success recently with this really talented young man another one based in the states just can come back off that now well ridden as you can see he's load of confidence in his horse another fellow with a combination bit a little sheepskin nose band on him carries his head quite high just helps to keep him help, helps him to concentrate a little bit so he has a snaffle and he also has a hackamore you can see he's, in, he's enthusiastic now difficult jump this one well done see how hard he works keeps him off the front rail now turns up nice and tight to this don't get dragged in here we go seven strides up there hang on to him keep him off that rail last fence coming up good shot well done we're in the jump off 78.37 seconds punch of the air and a pass for c top blue from andrew burns Seventh rider to go through to the jump off and really lapping up the appreciation from the crowd. Yeah, and as you say, the crowd really knowledgeable. They know their horses, they have their favourites, and they really appreciate when they see it done that well. Here we see him coming down to the double. It's a difficult jump, but you can see how much he trusts his horse and how good he is. Look, the ears prick, look at the expression on the horse's face, and that's what it means. Yep. Italy's Lorenzo De Lucia is next to come in. You see there that he's competing wearing the uniform of the Italian Air Force, and he rides for the Italian Air Force sports team. He was third in the Dublin Grand Prix when it was last run in 2019. Cash du Plessis is the horse, second in the five-star Grand Prix at Bolkenschwarz last month. Yeah, Lucas, a uh, regular visit, visitor to, to Dublin. We remember him here with Limestone Lad, had a fantastic show here a number of years ago, won the Grand Prix. He'll come back trying to repeat the process. It's a real blood horse, you can see. Very energetic, quite strong as well though, so he's gonna have his work cut out to keep the control that he needs. You see Lucas having to sit back, don't get dragged up to those fences, don't get too close. Whoa! And he keeps him off that rail. But as the course goes on, the questions get that a little bit more technical, a little bit more difficult and the control starts to numb up a little bit, so that's what happens. The triple bar just opens it up on him and then drags him down, so he's also had a foot in the water. And you can see the horse really toes around the corner, now lines up the combination, boxer in, great technique. Supports him, catches the back rail in the middle part, so he's decided he's had enough. No point in going any further, so it gives his horse a pat, he'll be another day. The middle part of the combination coming down to add to the vertical after the triple bar and a foot in the water, so Lorenzo decides to retire from the Grand Prix. Now, we will have uh, an American coming in fairly shortly, this is Katie Deenan. 
on the winning US team that won the 2014 Aga Khan, studied at the world famous Harvard University. Brago RMB is the name of the horse. RMB, just about the only type of music we didn't have here last night during the, uh, the raucous atmosphere of the puissance. Yeah, it was brilliant. In between, the, whenever the course was being adjusted, Alan Wade and his team putting up the wall. Brendan McArdle had us all here standing up and dancing. It was great crack. As I said, a huge crowd in here again today, but last night was great fun. And the guys put on a fantastic show here. We had 40, 12, 13 riders started out in the puissance and we brought it all the way through to conclusion after five rounds, one clear, so it was great fun. Now, Catron sets off, jumps the first fence, nice and organized. Look at the technique of this horse, look at the energy and the enthusiasm of him, the way he flicks his back end up in the air. So, I say this lady very successful in the past, she's been on the winning Aga Khan team, so she knows what it means to win around this arena. So, really stylish rider. Whoa, whoa, keeps him off the vertical. You can see now, set sail to the water. A mile off, it doesn't matter, it's huge scope. As I say, it's over four meters wide. And then sits up, keeps him back off that one meter 60 vertical. So, combination coming up. Really positive right in. He'll be in straight, good shot in. Look, she knows he's scope. You look at the back end, the way he flicks his heels. He doesn't want to touch them. Now. Difficult line here, as we've said before. Pops this, has a little rub, makes the adjustment. Very good. So, doesn't want to go too wide. This gets needs to get straight here. Get straight. Don't get dragged in. You can see she's having to work really hard. Watch him. Ah, and as I say, this track just gets more difficult the closer you get to home. That was really unlucky. Super effort. Total of five penalties, 81.63 seconds, just outside the time allowed of 81 seconds. It was the second part of the double. She'd given a, a few of the poles a rattle along the way before one eventually came down. Yeah, she worked really hard. You can see she's having to really support her horse. Jumps the water really well and then just comes down to this. Here we can see how enthusiastic the horse is. The way he uses his back end, flicks it up into the air. But you can see here, just gets caught out a little bit. Just gets his timing ever so slightly wrong. Last year's national champion Kevin Gallagher from Ballygawley and County Sligo is next up, riding Bally Patrick Flamenco, who was second in the Grand Prix in the international show at Balmoral. Yeah, Kevin's been on two winning Nations Cup teams already this year. So based down with Greg Broderick down in Tipperary. Big breeding operation down there, produced some beautiful horses. So they have a lot of young horses here at the show as well. So. Kevin taking all the opportunities he's been given. Really talented young man. Prolific winner on the Cone Grand Prix circuit. As I say, he was in Lisbon in the Nations Cup. And he'll be looking for more opportunities in the future, I'm sure. Michael Blake will have his sights set on trying to use as many of these young riders as he possibly can. I think he's used already 20 riders this year in nation, different Nations Cup competitions. So, great man to give people an opportunity. Great man to support the young riders, help them get into shows, and talk to owners. So much goes on in the background here. Kevin was really good there. Just if you see back, the horse has left his front leg hanging a little bit too low. He got in really well. So as you can see, really talented rider, lovely technique, sits so nice on the horse, balances it nice and quiet with his hands. Gets in. Big press, gives him a squeeze. Jumps the last ones. Outside the time allowed as well, so a couple of time penalties to be factored in. Six penalties in total, 82.61 seconds there by Kevin Gallagher and Bally Patrick Flamenco. Middle part of the combination was where it uh, came down. Yeah, it's a 12 year old, Wajitem Flamenco. Really nice horse, as I say, this is a step up. So I think Kevin will be. He'd be very disappointed, but I think when he looks back, he's going to be very happy. It was a very good round over a very difficult technical seven track. We have seven so far through in terms of clear rounds in the Grand Prix. This is Victoria Gullickson of Norway. Her younger brother, Johan Sebastian, was competing here this week and was taking part in the Polies relay yesterday. Got a great kick out of that, too. This is Equine America Papa Roach. Eight falls in uh, round one of the Nations Cup and Friday with a much improved clear round on the second spin. 
Yeah, she came back in the second round. She was foot perfect. It's a very talented young lady. A lot of experience. They say her brother is here. Her father would normally be riding on the teams with him. So I see Gur is here sporting a couple of injuries. Got a bit of a fall recently. Got broke up. So it was meant to be at the World Championships. So, but he's well represented by his son and daughter here on the Dublin Horse Show. And a great supporter of show jumping. Right. Gets those first couple of fences out of the way. Now to just keep him anchored. As I say, difficult fence to jump, heading back to the pocket. The horse has been in the ring a few times and just gets too close to the fence, basically. Now, now she wants to get a bit of mileage on this guy. Very well ridden. You can see how she just sits tall in the saddle, brings her, keeps her shoulders up, tries to create the space that she needs without killing the canter. Big combination now. Look, and you see how she, where she puts her hands, encourages her horse, uses back end. That's really good riding. Keep it organized. And now the five strides. Don't let, him, don't let him get you too close to it. And it really stretches out over that back rail. So, last line coming up. Don't cut the corner. Keep straight. Now, don't let him look down. Keep his head up. Well done. Now, press to get out. That's a big oxer. And lovely to the last. Well done. She'll be disappointed. And the time getting her cut out as well. Five penalties, 81.41 seconds for Victoria Goodickson and Equine America Papa Roach. It was the vertical in front of the Anglesey stand just before the triple bar. Yeah, that light plank sitting on flat cuffs. It gives it no touch at all, you can see. Barely put your toe on it and it's gone. Gets a little rub there, but it doesn't matter. She'll be, she's had a great show. Play around in the Naga can and jump around the Grand Prix here. So you can see her giving her horse a big pat. She knows what it means. She'll be back. Our British visitor, Georgia Tame, is next in, based in Belgium. Competed for Britain in the Nations Cups in Prague and Abu Dhabi this year. She was previously based with Shane Breen at Hickstead. And she's been only riding this horse since May. See big scopey horse 11 year old great use of itself you can see the way it hinges behind keeps its heels up into the air great technique now she needs to keep him off this difficult fence she does that very well it's a big jumping horse now jumps the triple bar sits up sits up keep him off and just can't get him back far enough. As I say, it's a very difficult line up there. If you don't have all the control that you need, you just can't get enough space. So, comes across for the combination. Skips in between it, does this very, very well. Whoa, oh, really careful. Now she needs to press, and that's what happens too much. She has to work so hard to make the space, and then when she tries to jump the fence, it loses it. So, wants to get him home now in one piece. Jump the vertical. Jump the oxer. And now last fence coming up. Ah, what a pity. Is he for sure? A couple of time falls to be added in as well. 12 is the total there for Georgia Tame. That uh, telephone box vertical after the triple bar is catching quite a few out. Yeah, it's a, tip, a, a technical line back there, as I say. You don't really know how your horse is going to react on the triple bar. Sometimes they just get dragged down the distance a little bit and make it, make it hard work. So you can see some of the guys have loads of control. They can sit up and horses will listen to them. Georgie's guy today just wasn't listened to her as much as she'd really have liked. Kuwaiti born Nael Nassar is next in representing Egypt. He tried playing many sports growing up in Kuwait, but eventually settled on horses and jumping. His most memorable feat to date was competing in the Tokyo Olympics. Coronado is his horse, fourth in Spruce Meadows in July. By Cassini, 13 year old. Lovely canter, lovely light across the ground. Plenty of experience as well. Competes regularly on this international circuit. Now needs to slow up a lot here. 
very, very well done. Real careful horse, you can see. Never took his eye off the top rail, knew exactly where it was. Uses all the experience that he has. Now, very good. Set sail to the water very early. And now he's going to need to put on the brakes. Ah, but gets caught out. As you say, we opened the door, just got up too much momentum. We tried really hard to slow it up enough. Now, combination, two strides. Horse pats the feet, pats the ground with his feet. Very light, very athletic. A tall man, was really stylish, sits so well on the horse. And you can see the horse just plunged at that at the last second on him. Has the front rail. So, takes his time, he knows he's got a few fences down, he's not going to worry about the time allowed. And now, comes to the double. Supports him. Little press. Last fence. That's scraping inside the 81 seconds allowed, 80.44 seconds there for Niall Nassar and Coronado, the vertical after the water jump coming down and then that Oxer the 11th fence. Yeah, you can see he set sail there to the water with a lot of enthusiasm and then just can't get the control he needs to jump that 1 meter 60 vertical down in the bottom corner. Seven through so far as things stand. McGann Massonnier, Shane Sweetenham, Edward Schmitz, Laura Kraut, Edward Levy, Connor Swale and Andrew Burns will be biding their time before returning to the arena. This is Yuri Mansour of Brazil, just outside the 100 in the world rankings, Brazil. competed at last week's uh, World Championships and also at the Tokyo Olympics. Vitiki is the name of his horse. Yeah, a very competitive rider. Another one that you, do, you wouldn't want to see in the jump off if you were there, but he's going to try and sneak in. Nice clear round out of this horse now. Real blood, real athletic, great use of itself. These modern show jumpers are so athletic. Just gets a little bit forward on the distance. And as I say, that rail is not going to take any rub at all. So we'll see what he's going to try and do now. Get this horse around, get a bit of experience on him. Yuri would ride a lot of horses on the circuit. So this is a 14 year old. So give the horse a lot of confidence, get a bit of experience. And they say, you know, get him into the ring, get his fitness up. Get a bit of experience into the horse. The riders also get to know a lot more about their horses when they go to compete at this level. As I say, they can go home then, they can train, they know exactly what they need to do. Match, we can't beat match practice. And the rhythm and the balance and the technical track that they have here. So the riders love this challenge. They're so competitive. So. They want to know the next time they meet Alan Way, they're going to be able to work it out. Two fences down, including the last fence there for Yuri Mansour. Welcome, Brazilian visitor. 76.68 seconds, the time he completed the round. Then. Yeah, you can see that rail again. Just takes, us, doesn't take any touch at all, or it's gone. Uh, jumped really well the middle part of the track, answered all the questions, and just has the last fence down as well. You can see Yuri just goes, "What happened?" The horse made a great effort, to be fair. A nice horse, I think one you'd keep an eye on for the future. This is Neve McAvoy, 18 years of age, from Oma in County Tyrone. Team bronze medalist at the European now. Junior Championships in Spain. Also won Grand Prix classes in Balmoral and Mullingar. She's riding Temple Patrick, welcome Limerick, who had a run out in the Dublin Stakes yesterday. Yeah, at the European Championships earlier on this year, Junior Championships. She has won practically every big class in Ireland over the last two years or 18 months. She has a great rapport with this mare. Can be quite flighty, but so careful, so light on her feet. So this is a big step up for a, an outstanding young athlete. She's such a super superstar. We've got so many talented young riders. And this young lady and this horse have been a force to reckon with all the way through this season. Greg Broderick there gives her a hand on the technical side of the job. Starts off really well now. As you can see that mare just her knees up under her, under her chin at every fence. So so careful. And as I say, Neve. Way more experience than her years would lead you to imagine. Now sit up, sit up, sit up. Brilliant. But the trust and the relationship that she has with her mare is just phenomenal. Now steady. This is brave. Whoa. 
Mare, as I say, she's so athletic, so light on her feet. Now, comes to the combination. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, two strides, help her off the ground. Hold it, support it. Now, keep it together, keep it together. Difficult line here now. See how the Mare pats her feet off the ground. Gets a little unruly, but she backs up. She's so, so careful, this Mare. Now, last line. Keep it, keep it, keep it. Six, seven strides down there. Now press. Ah, look what happened. Wait till you see the replay. The horse actually kicked out and kicked the pole back. Oh, that was an outstanding route from an outstanding combination. We're going to see this girl back in this arena for years to come. And I've no doubt at some stage she's going to win this Grand Prix. She is fantastic. Look at this. Look at the mare. Work so hard, work so hard. Now, you can see she's sitting back. Look at the determination. Brilliant stuff. And here we go. Watch what happens here. Comes off the ground beautifully. Mare brings her legs underneath her and now pushes the pole backwards. So unfortunate. Desperate misfortune. She was almost home, just the second last obstacle dropping so four faults this is eduardo Pereiro de menezes of brazil 2016 rio olympian won a number of world cup qualifiers in the united states he's the sole brazilian representative in this day five highlight the horse competed in the aga khan posted a clear round and four faults yeah look very long lean type of horse you can see the length of rain this is a tall rider very athletic horse look so let's see if he can keep the control. I'm sure he has the power. He's got the scope that he needs. Does he have the adjustment? Does he have the right ability? Can he adjust the horse and keep him balanced? That's the big test here. As I say, these horses and riders will jump around if you give them time and space. And that's what the course builder does. He makes it difficult for them. Keeps have to keep getting organized. So now moves up to the water. Big stretch over it. And now steady, steady lovely horse so let's him move across the arena sits nice and quiet just gets organized sits him up in two strides ah really unlucky horse just kind of stumbled a little bit when he landed just lost his balance on him big jump over that difficult fence number 11 and now on the rollback comes across the fence a little bit and as a result just misjudges where it is difficult for the horse then one fence to go eight falls is the total 79.17 seconds the middle part of the combination was first to come down for eduardo Pereira de menezes and a later vertical departed two bringing him up to eight falls here we can see just has that front rail down just the horse got a little bit unbalanced and then as you say got a little bit crooked to that fence made it difficult for the horse to judge where the rail was we flown along at great speed this is the uh, 40th of uh, the participants the last to go in in this first round trevor breen riding highland president trevor won the dublin stakes yesterday with germain who came through a jump off to claim the honors the 2014 hickstead derby winner trevor from county tipperary brother of shane was an action here earlier yeah really talented rider uh, he's put together a lovely string of horses this owned by his mother-in-law so but a really top-end horse now and look when these guys get the horses that they need to compete at this level are forced to be reckoned with both himself and shane are outstanding talents this is a particularly strong combination they put up some superb performances this year and you know really would have mistaken a claim to compete at the highest level and participate on the top teams and that's where we need to be we've strengthened depth now and it's fantastic for michael Begg, the chef to keep now a little bit off the triple bar but makes the adjustments as necessary but just not enough he's out of the jump off we'll be disappointed with that because this is a lovely horse and they say has jumped a lot of really good rounds this year good into the combination look at the scope look at the strength of this horse Whoa. really careful as I 
say. Trevor, a winner already to the, in this arena at this show. Oh, he'd be disappointed he's not going to get a, a crack at that in the Grand Prix to it. But I'm sure, like we keep saying, another man who'd be back here even stronger after this performance. One more fence. Really unlucky. Lucky sums it up, four faults there for Trevor Breen and Highland President. That vertical, the telephone vertical after the triple bar has caught so many of the participants out during the course of the Grand Prix. And this sun splash afternoon, so we will have seven going through to the jump album again. Massonier, France, Shane Sweetenham, then Edward Schmitz uh, going through. And Andrew Burns will be the last, and we see some of the minor placings will be filled uh, down through the rankings there. So drama still to come here, you'd imagine. Come back to us after the commercial break, when we'll see how the jump off unfolds for the Nanjing International Grand Prix of Ireland.
Welcome back to the RDS where the first round of the Grand Longines Grand Prix has come to a conclusion. We have seven clear rounds. Three of those are Irish or two French, one from America and one from Switzerland. And Brendan McCardle caught up with some of the Irish riders to hear how they got on. The clear round jumping machine does it again. Uh, well, the horse, the horse jumped amazing. Actually, we got in trouble a bit at the treble and he just showed what gear he has. I think it woke him up a little bit actually because he was after that. I just said, guide them home. He's a big horse, isn't he? A uh, big, but very athletic. Uh, he's like the LeBron James of show jumping. I think he can do. He can really move his feet quick, so he's a great horse. Well done. Best of luck on the jump off. Well done, Andrew Burns. Uh, that's a lifetime ambition, and it's completed as well. Absolutely, well, not com not completed yet. We still have the jump off to go. Very good all the way around. Very consistent everywhere. Very rideable, just the way I want him. So. The jump off course, will that suit you? Yes, it will, because it's big, long gallops, and he's very, very quick on his feet. So he's won a few of these, a few Grand Prix before this year. So uh, we're very excited. Best of luck. Thanks, guys. The living state side's coming out in Shane Sweetman, LeBron James, not Keen Lynch or Gary Ringrose. Nicola, who would you fancy in, in the jump off against the clock here? I think um, my choice, Ruby, would be Connor Swale. I mean, we've all seen what he did there on Friday with this uh, lovely little horse, and he's very fast, and he's definitely going to be in there to win. Jerry, the course will change, of course, to the jump off. They won't jump the, the exact course they have. It's on screen here. Talk us through it. Yeah, we're going to start over number three, and then we have a right-hand turn back to a vertical. Uh, or back, yeah, back to the vertical, and it goes directly then uh, from that, which was 15, down to number one. They'll do eight or nine strides here to that. The eight is the winning one, if they can get it. Then they go across to the second two parts of the combination. The, if they get in big here, maybe the, it's a bit short coming out. First round then after this, uh, they did uh, a bending eight. Now they will do seven down there um, to, the, uh, to that vertical. And they'll roll around the corner here. There's a possible eight on that rollback. Not many walk it but maybe there's an eight back there. And then to the last, if you really were having a good go there, you get nine, maybe the other one does 10. I'd be trying to get the nine. Maybe nine, that's the difference. The riders at the top of the, of the order, Jerry, they're kind of pathfinders. The later it goes, people will see if they can take those strides out, will they? Well, there's the odd lunatic that goes from the beginning as well, you know. There's a French guy there, and he would be taken out everywhere, you know, so uh, not the one here now, but another guy I know. But I think you're right. You know, the first one's in. Um, Shane Sweetham has a big stride, but his horse is green. Um, if I was to go for them, I think the French guy, Edward Levy, has a, has a good chance. And, a, and I would agree, Connor. Connor, because the horse is, um, is so good and careful, and Connor is so experienced, and he's almost chewing gum going around there. He's that confident. Nicola, Jerry mentioned the turn back to the big oxer here, which will be the second last jump they will jump on an eight strides round that bend. Is there scope to make that even tighter or is the oxer just too big? I think uh, I think even eight is, <laughs> is pretty ambitious, but uh, no, I, I definitely wouldn't be going any less than eight. And you really, even to get that, you really want to be galloping around that turn. Eight round the bend, galloping at it. Galloping suits me, Jerry. I'm not sure of these kind of jumps, but would you roll back? Would you roll back to something big like that, Ruby? How would you feel about I that? I think at this stage, for a share of 350 grand, I most certainly would roll back and take my chance anyway, Jerry. Oh, right. I die trying rather than <laughs> rather than come out thinking well, what we, could I have done. Uh, we, we we have seen you die trying. <laughs> yeah, most certainly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was good at dying trying, but anyway, when when you were at this level, Jerry, going in first, were you one to go at it, or were you a clear round man? I don't think I was a clear round man. I, I mean, I made mistakes here on Glendalough. One year, I, I took the, the, the wall for 20 yards. So, yeah, I, I, I'd go for it. Well, you'd go for it. Well, yeah. first into the ring is our French rider, Megan Monissier. Parik Lodge, talk us through it. Thank you, Ruby. The fanfare sounding to signal the start of the jump off here for the Longines International Grand Prix of Ireland. Again, back into the arena now on Cordial. This pair won the Grand Prix in Saint Tropez at the end of May. And it's fan a chance while the course was being rebuilt, Tom, probably for everybody to take stock and set out a plan for the jump off. Yeah, they, they'll know what the jump off is when they walk the course earlier on at lunchtime there. So they'll have all walked the distance. You've heard Jerry go through the patterns that are available to them. So they all have got their first round, worked that out, but they also have worked out what they're going to do for the jump off. So look, this is a big striding horse. He put in a suit. The first one to jump a clear round here. This young woman has already won a couple of Grand Prix, so she's competitive. She's first in. She knows she can put the rest of them under pressure. If she can put together 
a good quick round, clear obviously. The rest of them are going to have to go and take a chance. And that's what she's hoping that when they start taking chances, they make mistakes. This, this horse has been outstanding. Look at him. He's a huge, big horse. Look how light and look how well he covers the ground. So this guy's going to be well able to leave out strides. It's just going to come naturally to him. It's just how quick can she make the turns, really? Right. Jumps the first fence. Spends quite a bit of time in the air, but he's already brave here. This is a huge, big vertical. One meter sixty. One, two, three. Six, seven, eight on there. Now back across the arena. Here we have two parts of the combination left. Ox are in, and she's brave here. Big stride on this horse, but look how agile he is. Takes a seven, as he suggested. She knows he's all the scope in the world. She just needs to make sure that he sees this fence. Puts his eyes on it. There you can see his ears flick. Look at him, look at the expression on his face. Oh, that's fantastic, that's brave. Oh, and look at the buff from him at the end. She knows what she's done. He knows what he's done. That's a fabulous round. 42-77, she's going to put it up to the rest of the guys now. A punch of the air from Nigan, setting the standard for the others to follow. Brilliant clear round to get things going. Yeah, look how high he gets. Massive scope, great use of himself, great partnership. You know, she gave him every chance to jump a clear round, and she didn't. Left out the strides everywhere. You can see her encouraging him down there. It all came up beautifully. So, showing no exertions from the uh, Aga Khan excitement that they were both involved in on Friday. Now, the same can be said of Shane Sweetnam and James Khan Cruz, Irish members of that Aga Khan team here on Friday. James Khan Cruz, bred by Patrick Connolly. This one was previously campaigned by Francis Connors. Yeah, so interesting now to see what Shane's going to do here. This is a young horse. He's only a nine-year-old, real talent. But Shane is so competitive. He actually is not here to make up the numbers. He wants to win this tight back here to the pool bag lighthouse and moves up on that distance, not hanging around. Really athletic, this horse. Possibly a little bit quicker across the ground than Megan's horse. Now slows up a little. Knows he's athletic. Watch him back up here. Just goes high. Has even weight on the seven. Just gets dragged out a little wide here. Looking for his distance. Gives his horse that little bit of time to get it. And now he's brave to the last. Horse puts his eye on it. Look at that. Fantastic. Now. The roar goes up from the crowd. He's advantage Shane. He takes the lead. So he's looking to put the pressure on the rest of them. And they're going to get quicker and quicker. So watch this face. This is an outstanding horse. You can see how he meets that challenge. Jumps in, backs up. Look at the scope. Look at the stretch. Brilliant. Edward Schmitz of uh, Switzerland next in. Yeah, he wants to run the Irish party. Yeah, it was very good in the first round. Real athletic horse. We loved him. The way he galloped. So... Let's see what he's going to do now. Everybody goes quiet. It's great. Huge respect for the athletes. You can see this guy's even going to jump across the first fence. Jumps from left to right. Cuts the corner. And he's very tight here. Stands off that. Now he moves up. Now he's starting to gallop. He knows he's got to be quick here. He has to take a chance. It's tight. Gone a little bit wider to the double, but he's really traveling. He knows his horse backs up, knows his horse is careful. Again, comes across the fence, jumps it on the angle. Eye on this. Oh, look at the angle on this. Look how tight he is. Can he pull it off? Yes, he does. Now, last fence coming up. Eye on the clock, possibly quicker. Yeah, he's gone quicker, all right. 39.82 seconds from our Swiss visitor, Edward Schmidt. So he's gone into the lead now. With three horses into the jump off. Yeah, you can see, really made it up at the beginning. Was very tight back between the first and the second jump. But now look who we got coming into the arena. So very brave there. You can see, jumps across the oxer. So 
the other riders they'll have some of their advisors here watching around they'll know exactly what the other guys have done so laura comes in now again as i say loads of experience she's won in every big arena in the world she has her medals but she wants to put her hand on this trophy as well she set sail now to this first fence already good canter and look how nimble her horse is now nice and tight back here set sail really wants to gallop down here you can see picks the forward stride slows up she's very clever look how quick she drops back after that tall fence scoots across the arena doesn't miss a trick brilliant here now look how light her horse is off the ground now how brave can she be here how tight can she be this is very 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 quick yes needs to get the distance back rails a long way away look how the horse ah oh, so light barely touches it and probably has the time no great effort she was really unlucky there the penultimate obstacle comes down laura kraus on four faults on board kung fu yeah look she gives the horse a big pat she knows what an effort you can see here just wanted a little bit more space turning back the slightest it touches and it barely dropped our french representative is next in edouard levy a 28 year old from deauville Uno de Cerisi is this horse who helped France win the Nations Cup at Hickstead recently. Yeah, look, the French guys are always competitive. This guy won't mind going quick. It's just, can he get the whole balance of it? An absolutely stunning horse. You can see how light he is. Looks, ears pricked. He knows his job. And again, comes across the angle on the first fence, jumps from left to right. Try to go as quick as he can, as tight as he dare. Oh, look at that horse looking for the fence. This is very quick as well. Now, really keeps going. Wants to jump this, drop back as tight as he can. Come across the oxer. A little bit wide to the double maybe, but it keeps up the pace, keeps up the momentum. Ah, as I say, that's a difficult jump. Jerry mentioned the distance there can be quite tight, so the quicker you're coming in, the more difficult it is to make the space. So, fence down, but he knows there's plenty to gallop for. And that's a wide oxer coming across the angle like that on it makes it so difficult. Two fences down a total of eight faults, 42.57 seconds there for Edouard Levy. Yeah, he gives his horse a pat. Great effort. Look, it's all these guys aren't interested in being second. They want to win this. So no quarter given. Great effort. Look, barely touches it with his near four. Those flat cups, they don't take anything. Connor Swale and Count Me In, the Nations Cup heroes from Friday, are back in the arena now. Connor seeking to do that rarely achieved feat of winning the Aga Khan and the Grand Prix in the same year. Tommy Wade and Dundrum, 1963, the last time it happened. Yeah, he's having a look there now while they're getting the course ready. There's Tom Holden, one of the assistant course builders with the ground crew. So he's having a look at the distance there. He wants that eight stride turn back saw this horse working up in the warm-up arenas this morning he's an absolute gorgeous horse so athletic so light on his feet he knows his job they're a superb partnership we saw them here on friday jump three rounds for us he's won a number of classes this year he's ranked number four in the world he relishes the challenge hang on to your seats yep you can see Going another one, he's going to cut the corner. Pops the first. So athletic, so light. Look at this. Eye on the fence. Now he gallops down the corner. Down to what was originally the first fence. Now he needs to drop back very quickly. Doesn't want to go too wide. Connor, such an eye for a stride. Watch how he can just roll up to this. Hits it perfectly. And watch his horse back up. Super stuff. Seven strides. Now let's see what we can do here. How brave is he? Oh, fantastic. It comes up for him. Horses twist a little bit. Last fence coming. Here we go. Keep an eye on the clock. Yes. And just outside the time, 40.29 seconds for Connor Swale. What an effort. Brilliant effort. Not more he could have done there. That was foot perfect. What a beautiful horse. What a combination. 
see he just had a look up at the screen and had a look at the clock and the realization hit him then that he'd been edged out yeah you can see him here over the second part of the double sits up watch this for a jump across the angle fantastic and down to the last fence look how high he gets great shot Standard still being set by Edward Schmitz. And now Andrew Burns and C. Top Lou. Yeah, just gives his horse a look at the second fence. Andrew fancies his chances here. He knows his horse is quick across the ground. Put in a superb performance to jump the first round. He comes in here on a lot of good form. He loved to make it an Irish win. Okay. Jumps one. Really tight. just fighting him a little bit now he's really going to have to move up here now slightly off the pace by my reckoning jumps this now here he comes gives himself a little space clear in holds him supports him now gets this vertical out of the way and this is a difficult turn back to this big oxer yeah go on jumps across the angle and now sets sail down to the last fence slightly outside the time he's not going to win this but he's going to be well placed fourth place finish 42.38 seconds for andrew burns he went flying around he went clear but not quick enough and it's swiss delight in the grand prix yeah fantastic round as they say edward came here to have a good cut at this grand prix he had a wonderful horse but he jumped a foot perfect round in the jump off Andrew knew his horse was really quick across the ground, but he can only do so much. Gave him a really confident ride. He'll come back another day and have a great result. Here's the confirmation that Edward Smiths of Switzerland has won the Longines International Grand Prix of Ireland, going fastest and clear in the jump off 39.82 seconds on board Gammon van Nastelhoff. Connor Swale finishing second with Shane Sweetnam coming home in third place. And Edward Levy taking seventh place. And what was a hugely exciting renewal of this prestigious and lucrative prize. And let's hand down now to Brendan McCarthy. Thanks, Porrick. Well, I'm here with Connor Swale. So close. Oh, yeah, listen, I'm disappointed, but, you know, I shouldn't be disappointed. Like, the horse has had an incredible week, and I've had an incredible week. Um, I really wanted to win that one today. But I felt, you know, I did everything I could. I uh, maybe one less to the last would have got it for me. But, I mean, the horse is just... He was galloping like you were going as fast as Ruby Walsh would be going around Cheltenham. Yeah, I, maybe it didn't suit me as much. There was a lot, a lot of ground to cover there today. Maybe, maybe a bigger, a bigger step, bigger step uh, help. But you know, he, like he just jumped. I mean, he's amazing. He, he jumped amazing all week. He said he had three fast rounds. Let's meet him actually. Let's meet him, like, yeah. I mean, look at him. Look. Who Look, he's a gorgeous horse, a great temperament as well. After doing everything he's after doing. Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't think he's uh, he's he's ran around uh, meter sixty jumps, the biggest jumps around. You call him Ned, is it? No, Crosby. Ned's the other one. <laughs> <laughs> this one's Crosby. This is How Crosby. did he get the name? I think he was always called Crosby when we got him, but I think it's something to do with uh, a, ho a good hockey player in Canada, I believe. Okay. Isn't that right, babe? So you're, you're going to have a little rest after this? Uh, no, I'll, I'll fly off to Ottawa. We have a five-star again next week with a different set of horses. And then these guys fly over to Spruce Meadows. We have... Uh, Three billion to jump for in, in three weeks' time there. It's the Spruce Meadows Masters, so that's our next big achievement. Well, Connor, it's been great having you here this week. You've given the Irish public a lot to be proud of, and, of course, yourself and your family. I know it means a lot to you to come back here to Dublin. It does indeed, Brenton. I mean, uh, it's been an amazing week. It'll probably take me a little while for it to sink in, to be honest. I mean, that, that win on Friday for, for me and for Ireland uh, has really lifted the whole country. Well done. Thanks, man. Yeah, it was magic to have him here, and Jerry, he did give it a go. He opened up from fence three to fence four. I don't know was there much more he could have done. What did you think? Uh, I think he picked it himself uh, to the last. It uh, cost him a good bit, and he hung in the air at the second last. Um, he did a fantastic job. The horse, can you imagine that's how many he had... Five, fly, five clear rounds in the last three days. I mean, this horse has jumped a lot of clear fences, but it's a pity. Uh, I think one less to the last and not hanging up at the second last, he could have done it. He may have, he might have, but Edward Sch Schmitz, even Nicola, he, he opened up and set a fair target. He was third into the ring and it was going to be hard to catch him. That's right, Ruby. The, the, the top two horses in this were the smaller blooder horses, which 
given how long and galloping the track was, I'm a little bit surprised because normally the bigger horses that cover more ground, you can kind of have an advantage with those. But it was the two small blood horses that really set off from the get-go and they were the fastest in the end. They were the fastest in the end and that turn back from the third last to the second last, they were on nine and ten. None of them quite got your eight, Jerry. No, no, and that's why I am uh, I can be well regarded as just being human, like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have to say, I have to say, hats off to the course designer. That was one wonderful course, great for the crowd, got the right number of Irish in, and uh, I think it's been a wonderful week for us. It has been the most wonderful week, and Nicolette's hats off to them all week. The Aga Khan course, even the Puissance, getting so many horses into the last round. Alan Wade all week has been incredible. Alan Wade is, uh, in my opinion, the best horse builder in the world, and we're unbelievably fortunate to have him uh, building here in Ireland. He does some of the national competitions, and uh, it's absolutely great for Irish riders to be able to ride over that standard, of course. We didn't get to mention anybody before the jump off, Jerry, but I thought Neve McAvoy at 18 years of age, she rode an incredible round. I know she had 13 B down, but a lot of it looked quite difficult. I, I, I thought I, she looked exceptional. She was great. I was sitting up um, at the double there, uh, the second last where she had it, and she was running out of rideability a little bit, and it was difficult for her to get in. It got in and had a bit to do going out. She put leg on, and that's cost her it. But what a wonderful round, and you're dead right. A real talent, a tough girl, and a very, very nice horse that's improved. You you said it already, that, the, that this you didn't think had as much jump as this, and it's showing more and more all the time. Every time, yeah. You said she'd be difficult, Nicola, and she was difficult at times across the bottom of the ring from when we were standing at the top. She did look difficult. I mean, for, we saw Max Watchman at 18 coming in here in the Aga Khan, and there's another 18-year-old with a huge future. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable the talent that we have. Like Jerry's already mentioned that we have the best young riders in the world, and I think today um, has really proved that. If we look at jump-offs, I was watching Andrew Burns last in. He did what I couldn't do, and that was not have a go, Jerry. <laughs> Yeah, maybe he had a lot of other things in his mind. Maybe he didn't think he could catch them. Maybe he's the right ability. You saw him on the turn back to number two. He was having difficulty already. And maybe he said, look, a, a slice of the cake is better than no cake. So uh, I think he probably made that decision. Yeah, here, I suppose it depends. I'm inclined to think that maybe you don't get that many chances. And sometimes you have to take, you know, you really have to take it in your hands and say, I'm going to try and do it. But I did see the difficulties he had. Well, Edward Schmidt is standing by to have a chat with Brendan McCardle. I hope his English is better than my French. <laughs> I think it is, Ruby, actually. Uh, 2017 is whenever Switzerland last won the Grand Prix here. Congratulations. What does this mean to you? Uh, it means the world to me. It's my first win on this level. Uh, I thought I'd be a bit cheeky when I went into the jump off. It's paid off. And now uh, we'll enjoy that prize giving as much as I can. <laughs> Your chef to keep was very confident that you or some of your team members would actually win here this afternoon. <laughs> was he? <laughs> I'm not sure if I was that confident, but uh, that's what happens with riding. Sometimes it, go well, so sometimes it goes well, sometimes it goes wrong. You have to give it your best shot, and when it works out, that's good for everyone. Tell us, take us around the course. Tell us from the, from the start where you think you won it. I think uh, I had a very good turn from number one to number two. And then uh, I managed to get the eight strides, but not everybody uh, did. And then uh, the roll back to the V4 last Oxer was really cheeky. And uh, I have to thank my horse for this one, yeah. Had you practiced a big gallop like that before to the final one because you were sort of jumping into the crowd there? Exactly. No, uh, he has a very big canter, so that's uh, very good to use in a jump off. And uh, hopefully it's the first of many other ones. Will you join an elite group of riders who have won the Grand Prix here at Dublin and some of your own very top Swiss riders. Enjoy the moment. It's one of the best Grand Prix in the world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, it is a great, a great Grand Prix and it was magnificent to watch. And Jerry, we're going to watch that last round. He called it cheeky. Some of the manoeuvres he made, I'd say brave. Yeah, he's, he's, he's working with Thomas Fuchs and Thomas Fuchs is really clever against the clock. He came across the angle here and I think he had one less here to number two and here is the eight he made down to the second. You see it's on full gallop. Now watch him go across to the to the double. Um, he's his eye on it early, turns in and it's a smooth turn in and he's helped him a little going in, helped him going out. Now this was easy for him here because he's a big stride. That seven came up easy and here he said I was cheeky back here. He was. He took a real good shot here, jumped it and then he went one, two, five, six and he put 10 there but it was a quick 10 the horse took a lot of steps quickly and uh, i think he made it like he said the early part and the gallop to the double 
Nicola Ryden, a lot of riding is instinct, how you find it, how you feel it, how you see it. When he landed at the second last and went for that Terry 10 that Jerry described, does he make that decision instantly or does he find his way down? You have to make your, that decision instantly when you're trying to take strides out, Ruby. If you don't land and go, it's not going to happen for you. Well, Parik and Tom, for the last time, we want to have a presentation and the winner is making his way into the main arena here at the RDS. Certainly is Ruby coming through the pocket of the Simmons Court Road end of the arena. And a lot of the crowd have stayed in to uh, witness the appreciation and the awarding of prizes at the end of what's been a, a terrific week of action at the RDS. Yeah, we've had a fantastic week. Uh, the Grand Prix has lived up to expectations. It's always a fantastic competition. Uh, brilliant jump off, as you say, as the guys in the studio have said, we're so lucky with Alan Wade. You know, he builds the most magnificent courses he brings out the best in everybody they're fair it's really challenging but it's great fun to watch you can see the riders really up for it so they're all coming into the arena now and enjoying the occasion connor swale waving to the crowd connor finishing in second place shane sweetnam in third place and uh, connor has been one of the stars getting better with age i think would sum up uh, how things stand with connor swale and shane sweetnam now coming in and that's a grey James Can Cruz. Yeah, a couple of young horses here. These are Irish horses as well. We have to add in and great for the breeding. Andrew Burns on his horse. He'll be delighted with a fourth place finish. Shane's horse is only a nine year old, as you say. These will be back again. We'll see these on more Nations Cup teams. We'll see them more and more Grand Prix. Miguel Mossonnier, who took fifth place coming in. And there's Laura Kraus. So. Yeah, and all of this fantastic jump off, four clear rounds in the end, double. So they really gave us something to keep us entertained. Come in now, and it's a great new tradition now where the grooms come in as well. And they get acknowledged the hard work that they do in the background looking after these horses, early mornings, late evenings, lots of travel. And you hear it there from the interview with Connor, how busy these people are. Straight on to Ottawa, then up to Spruce Meadows, horses will fly back. It's just it's amazing what we get these horses, what these horses can do for us. So fabulous to have our Irish riders here in the lineup. Connors had a great week. Shane has been outstanding, and as you say, Andrew Burns, he'll be delighted with that. All seven riders who took part in the jump off have come back into the arena to receive prizes and to be acknowledged for their efforts. The military band is also back in place playing of the Swiss national anthem. Mikey's coming in there, leading rider for the leading rider prize, I suspect. So the riders lining up now in front of all so the riders come up in front of the presidential box to First line up before the proceedings the get underway. Arena. Aspects getting, getting organized. Our winner today, so, Edward Schmidt, Edward's going to enjoy this occasion. As you say, this is his first five star win. So, national anthem now coming up.
So the grooms are coming. Yeah, just let the horse keep walking. He's going to get agitated if he stands still. So he knows his horse. He's going to have plenty more of these prize givings, I'm sure, in the future. This is only a 10-year-old by Chaco Chaco. So a really talented horse, and you can see. When I think Edward was saying he was cheeky, I just think he was confident and talented and just did everything right. Magnificent piece of silverware being carried in by the military policeman for the presentation ceremony. And first up onto the podium, Shane Sweetnam, who occupied third spot with James Cam Cruz. The RDS president, Professor Owen Luce, involved in the presentation party, along with Graham Murray, who's the Longines representative, their brand manager in the UK and Ireland. So, Shane delighted. He knows he's got such a bright future with this horse. As I say, he's a talking horse now, so he'll be looking forward to the challenges in the future, and I'm sure he'll get his eyes set on the Olympics in Paris with this horse. And the fact they're now qualified is going to give them a real opportunity to catch it. A good plan. Connor is on the one step higher here on Friday. I know he's a little bit disappointed he didn't win this, but he can be so proud of what he did. And I say, but like the lads, you know, it wasn't a whole lot more he could have done in that jump off. He gave it a great shot. He's had a great week. Connor, the world number four. And this is the man of the moment. 23 years of age. Ward Smith acknowledging the crowd and under the clear blue sky at the RDS. Yeah, and, watch. and it's great to hold a lot of people still here in the stands, getting a lot of applause. A lot, you know, it's great. This crowd really appreciate their show jumping. They'd have loved an Irish victory, but they acknowledge what this young man has done on this fabulous horse, and they've stayed here to, to wish him well. Edward was named Newcomer of the Year last year by the Swiss Equestrian Association. Recently completed his studies at the University of Zurich, Zurich in mathematics. And Professor Lewis now hands over its yeah. stunning momentum. Fabulous trophy. Great congratulations to the Royal Dublin Society. They put on a fantastic show this week. After COVID, they sat down and decided to organise, try and get back and have 2022 as good as we've ever had it. And I have to say, congratulations to Pat Hanley, Fiona Sheridan, and all the, those in the equestrian office. They've they've surpassed our expectations. We've had so much entertainment, so much fun here during the week, and it's culminated in a just fantastic Grand Prix. Best of jumping, the best of sport. The Irish Trophy placed on the podium for some photographs to be taken. These are, will be treasured souvenirs for all involved. It was a real high quality renewal of the Grand Prix and it, it certainly didn't disappoint. No, as I say, look, it's 1 meter 60, 350,000 euros up for grabs. You know, they all came out here, all guns blazing. Alan Wade put up a serious test. It was very technical. Fences down everywhere. Third fence fell quite a bit. Combination was very challenging. The latter part of the track then was particularly difficult. Anybody who started to lose any bit of control really lost out on the last line. So, and then he got the perfect number back into the jump off. And a great result. We can hand down now to Brendan McArdle. Yeah, well, I'm going to have a quick word with the international riders. And of course, we're going to go first to, oh, actually, we're going to the FEI. He's going to make a nice uh, presentation first, and then we'll have a quick word with our, our winners. And what a great uh, performance it was from them here this afternoon. I know, as you uh, mentioned, we would have liked to see an Irish win, but that wasn't to happen uh, this afternoon. But we're going to quickly run in. Shin, sweet them. Congratulations. Uh, your horse was brilliant here all week. Uh, thanks, Brendan. Yeah, uh, Gizmo uh, was fantastic. Um, we have to learn to be a, a little bit faster. I think he spends too much time in the air, but uh, it felt great. Um, and like I told you, I thought Connor would be two seconds faster than me, not him. So uh, that was great that Edward won. And uh, yeah, great for the Irish crowd. It's just been a, an unbelievable week for Team Ireland. Uh, amazing, amazing. To dream to, to, to win the Aga Can and the crowd and the atmosphere was amazing all week. The best fans in the world. And today, we, we, myself and Connor try, today, myself and Connor tried to, to get the Grand Prix over the line, and uh, shame the Swiss guy got in the way. But okay, we'll come to him in just a moment, Connor Swale. Why would why didn't you go a little bit faster? I know I'm, I'm thinking that myself, unfortunately. Uh, but 
Yeah, I mean, the, my horse has been incredible all week. Like you say, it's been a, it's been a great week uh, to be an Irish show jumper, and I was very proud on, on Friday to be able to, uh, to be part of that winning a can team. And then, listen, I mean, I'm a bit disappointed being second, which is actually a bad thing to say. I mean, the horse has just been incredible all week, and uh, he nearly deserved to, to win more, more than me. Um, it's a fabulous result for me and for my horse and all my owners and family and, uh, you know, everyone involved. Well, well done to you. We've, we've enjoyed talking to you. But I'm going to have a quick word with our winner of the Longines Grand Prix of Dublin. You've got your lovely timepiece from Longines. That's an important what part to get, but this is a historic Grand Prix. Do you understand the significance of this Grand Prix here at Dublin? Yeah, of course. And since I stole it from two Irish riders, uh, <laughs> I understand it even more. <laughs> <laughs> you, might, you mightn't be able to get out of Dublin tonight, but tell us, what was the feeling like here in Dublin? You've jumped in many arena around the world. What's it like to come into this hollow turf and actually win here? Uh, I think you can feel the history that there is in Dublin, and uh, the crowds have just been insane all week, and uh, I couldn't have wished for a better place for my first five-star Grand Prix win. <laughs> where do you go to from here? Where, where's, what's your plans? I'm going home, <laughs> and then uh, next week I have a show in Switzerland. Okay, well, many congratulations. We know the history between the Swiss and the Irish. You, of course, have been part of the history here at Dublin, the Swiss, and, of course, it's been 1987, uh, beg your pardon, 19, 2017. We're in Muff, actually won it on that occasion, so you join an elite group of riders to have won the Grand Prix here at Dublin. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please show your appreciation to the winner of the Longines Grand Prix of Dublin winner, Edward Swift. He's going home giving the direct answer to the question. Thanked by Connor Swale and Shane Sweetnam and getting another chance to get his photograph taken with this most sought after trophy, raising it aloft and drawing the cheers from the crowd. Flowers for the runners up. And it's going to be fascinating to see how this man's career develops in the years ahead. Yeah, look, he's already stamped his place in the history books when winning this Grand Prix he'll have the name on the on the wall and the roll of honor so and this is this is great because it also qualifies him for every other Grand Prix for the rest of the year having won a five star so there's, there's a hidden bonus on this and that'll give him a chance you know to push on from here um, Connor and the boys are busy they have busy schedules ahead of them now so they're going to be really competitive in the next couple of weeks and hopefully a lot of roads now are going to lead down to Barcelona for the for the final of the Nations Cup series and we really look forward to that and hopefully they're going to, to win out. So. And Mikey Pender, reigning national champion, has been announced here as the winner of the best international athlete. Leading rider, yeah. Leading Irish international athlete. So he was very competitive here all week. Rides for the Marion Hughes stud. Won a couple of classes, has had ridden the young horses, won the four-year-olds. He's a busy young man, an outstanding talent, and uh, not surprising to see him on the podium here today. So, guys, they're now getting their horses connected again. Shane's back up on James Cannon Cruz. Mikey just getting his point, being presented there by Professor Owen Lewis, the president of the society. So, last of the formalities. So the guys will be back on the horses and we'll get ready then for the lap of honour. And let's hand down to Brendan now, who'll hopefully have a few words with Mikey. Thanks a million, Porrick. Um, well, I'm delighted to be joined by the national champion and the leading international rider here at the show, Mikey Pender. Somebody was asking, who are you going to give the flowers to? Um, I don't know. Whoever's the first person at the gate um, looking for the flowers. It's been a, an unbelievable week for you. You've been winning all over the world this season, but to come back here to Dublin, it, it's important, like every other rider has said, but for you, because you're a real Dublin horse show man. Yeah, definitely. It's the best show in the world, and i um, delighted to be leading rider here this week. Um, my horse went from fantastic form, and um, thanks very much to the crowd um, for being behind us all week. I think uh, you give them plenty to be supportive of as well. What show do you go to after here? Um, I do Valkensvard next week, and then I'm back for the Breeders' Classic in Barnadown. 
Well, that's one of the biggest young horse classes in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please put your hands together for the national champion and, of course, for the leading international rider of the show, Mikey Pender. So Mikey Pender raises the flowers aloft. He became the youngest ever winner of the uh, Hickstead Derby on his first attempt in 2019 as a 19-year-old. And one of just this really exciting crop of young riders in, in Irish show jumping at the moment. Yeah, he rides a lot of nice horses. As I say, he's off to Valkensvar next week, Global Champions Tour. Then back here, Mikey rides the Grand Prix horses, but he also rides the four-year-olds, five-year-olds. He's he can be riding seven or eight horses at any at a show here in Dublin. So a really busy guy, but look, he's another one of our outstanding young athletes, ranked in the really highly. He's in one of the top five in the under 25 rankings in the world. So gets plenty of opportunities. As I say, no surprise to see him on the podium. Um, and it won't be long before we see him here in the Grand Prix as well, you know, but look we've had Great entertainment here Andrew three riders here in the lineup with the, the Grand Prix win the Nations Cup Shane Trevor Breen Won yesterday, you know, we've won a lot of classes here. Richie Howley had a great show. So as I say, it's Top sport here, man. We're really holding our own. I know we've lost out on the Grand Prix, but we really have stamped our authority here on all, most of the other classes. We've put it up to the international riders, and any, one, any prize that they've won, they've had to work really hard for it. So we're proud of the red jacket we saw a moment ago. Oh, top American rider. This class at Dublin, just the show at Dublin, attracts all the top international riders, and there's an opportunity now for Edouard Schmitz, having won the Longines Grand Prix to embark in a lap of honour, accompanied by Conor Swale and Shane Sweetnam. Laurel go as well, they'll all get involved. Yeah, no, he'll really enjoy this. Still loads of people in the stand applauding and acknowledging what he's done here. They really are going to, yeah. What a fabulous horse galloping down there underneath the judges' box. He's going to soak this up. You can see the ground jury, all the judges out, acknowledging the performance. He might have a lot of people making the show happen, so he'll enjoy this. Connor there, all of them, so he's going to come around. And Edward gets another run around, and the rest of them will leave him at it. So, yeah, look, young man, bright future. I don't think he was cheeky, I just think he was proper talented and riding a world class horse. So. Certainly a day here to remember, particularly the unique atmosphere that prevails in Dublin. Connor Swain enjoying the moment as well. A little disappointment that he was shaded out of it, but as weeks go, it wasn't half bad for the Madison County down the world number four. Yeah, look, they've had a great week, as I say. They can be really proud of what they've done. They've put together some fantastic horses, and look at him go. He was quick in the jump off, and he's quick in the victory lap. He's had a great weekend. He's going to return to the pocket now, having done two nice laps of the arena after a thrilling international Grand Prix here at the RDS. Now, if anybody feels they might be on a lucky streak, here's how you can enter our competition. RTE Sport have teamed up with Kilkey Castle, who want to give you the chance to win a three-night breakaway in their 12th century majestic castle, located along Ireland's ancient east and set on 180 acres of its own wonderful woodland, gardens and golf course. You'll be whisked to this elegant property by private transfers and picked up wherever you are in the country. Once there, you'll enjoy breakfast each morning and dinner in Hermione's restaurant on two nights, along with a very special private tasting in their beautiful drawing room by their head chef of 